Hey, Mike Bradley here. Hope you're all doing well. I come from a very cold England today, hence the scarf and cardi combo going on. Um, and as it's cold, I want to talk to you about the blues, man. Yeah, I want to give some tips on blues playing and ways to kind of spice up your blues playing and spruce it up. And we're going to kind of nick some ideas, or big idea, from a, a Mr. Eric Clapton. Uh, and the kind of BB King school playing as well. And I expect Clapton got this idea from BB King, you know, I know uh, BB King's Clapton's hero. Um, so basically, in blues, uh, we have four chords mainly, right? We've got a one, four, five. So in A7, we've got, uh, sorry, in the key of A, we've got A7, D7, and E7, all right? So, what people usually do, if they've got... That thing going, they have the chords going and they're just playing nothing but A minor pentatonic. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, hopefully you can hear, that sounds quite cool. Um, I've got a loop pedal here with that chord progression going. So if I push that and play nothing but A minor pentatonic. You got that stuff. You get the idea, all right? So, nothing wrong with that at all. Sounds cool, everyone does it. People have made careers out of just playing those notes uh, and they do a well bit. But, after a while, if you want to kind of add a bit of a maturity to a plane, um, we can do this little trick. Now, basically, over an A7 chord, as well as playing A minor pentatonic, which we just heard works great, we can mainly play a major pentatonic, and this is what Clapton does. Over an A7 chord, he'll play A major pentatonic. So we have that happening. And it's that kind of sweeter sound happening with it. Um, so I just did there kind of coming from shape two, so that would be five on the sixth string. Five, seven, four, seven, four, seven, four, six, five, seven, five, seven. All right. So you can do just pure major pentatonic over that. I did earlier, I played, uh, I slid from five to six on the third string, and that's using that C note, so the minor third from the minor pentatonic. Hope this sounds like I'm making it very confusing. It sounds confusing when I'm talking it, hopefully, it's making sense. Um, but yeah, I'm sliding five to six, so going from minor third to major third, uh, C to C sharp, and then five on the second string, seven on the second string. And then you got five on the first string, you can do what you want from there. And that's where I'm kind of linking it back into major pentatonic. So that's having that sound. Strap went then. Alright. Or you can do it from obviously the full fret. Which in this case would be a B note. If I hit the loop pedal, I've forgotten what uh, speed I did it now. That kind of thing happening, alright? So, makes sense? Good. Uh, so, A7, major pentatonic, and minor, but mainly major. Um, <clears throat> now, on the D7 chord, uh, which is usually a dominant of some form, um, we will play a minor pentatonic on this. So if you've got A7, you got that happening. Uh, now hopefully to your ears it's like, oh yeah, that's right, that makes sense. Sounds really cool. And then the A would be after that, and I just played A major pentatonic there. back around it, right? So, does the sum up, A7, D7, B minor. Now, 
番、千葉イサブン。D7 or D ドミナン。Clapton and BB King usually do, they play E major pentatonic over that. Not always, they might do E minor, depends on the weather. <laughs> It's cold, so we want to cheer ourselves up to make it happy. So, with the E7 chords, or E dominant chords, sorry, I say E7, there's E7, um, we will play A major pentatonic again. So, if I play an E chord, I try not to bend because I've got a wank bar going on here. I hope you can hear that works. Then D7. You got that happening. That's right. Alright.、Um, hopefully, this is making sense. So, to sum up briefly, A7, you can do major pentatonic, A major pentatonic on that. On D dominant chord, D7, D9, whatever. Um, we can do D minor pentatonic and on, on the E7 do A major pentatonic. But E minor,、um, sorry, on the E dominant chord, A minor will still work great, you know. Then, that's kind of like the Albert King, Steve Ray Vaughan school of playing. Spot called I'm gonna quit you, baby. Is that what I said? <laughs> what a tool. But anyway, hopefully, that's kind of giving you some ideas in case you're screaming out, I want some licks, Mike.、Um, so, my little loop pedal here. We can do stuff like that. So,、uh, I've already given that first one. So, we've got the A7. So, what I'm doing there. Five to six, and then on the third string, sliding in, and we've got five seven on the second string, and then five on the first string, seven on the second string, five on the first string, seven on the second string, that kind of repeating pattern going on. Alright, D7. Only a couple of notes, but it sounds very effective. I'm bending up, so now I'm in A minor pentatonic. I'm bending up the 8th fret, up a tone, bringing it down to pitch again on the 8th fret, and then playing the 5th fret on the 1st string, the A note, twice.、Uh, that's something I personally do a lot.、Um, I know Peter Green and Captain do that kind of thing as well when they play a note. That kind of thing, you know. So you've got A7. Stop there, so you've got uh, uh, top two strings on the fifth fret, play them, add one to the seventh fret on the second string, sixth fret, third string, slide back to four, and then you've got the two on the third string, second fret, which is an A note, and then you're going back into position one for、uh, a major pentatonic. 
got some major and minors going on here. Um, so that's one for that. And if you want a little lick for the E7. That sounds quite cool. Uh, what did I do? <coughs> that's it. That's what I did. Sorry, I don't know what I'm playing after time. So I'm siding 5 to 7 on the 2nd string. And then going to the root note, well, the A note on the 1st string, 5th fret. And then I'm bending up 7th fret, 1st string. And then bring it down and pulling off to the 5th fret. I hope you can see and hear that. And then going to the 7th fret, 2nd string. Back to the 5th fret, 1st string. And then 7th the fret, 1st string. Alright, so a couple of uh, little licks there for each chord. I don't want to, I mean I could sit here and give you licks for like a three minute progression. But in the long run, I don't think it would benefit you just learning loads of licks. Um, because I know the way I look at it, if you learn a lot of licks, you've got to know a lot of licks to be able to play a solo in it for it makes sense. Um, you don't really want to rely on just licks. You want to be able to play music. Um, that's the kind of best way I think to think of it as opposed to okay, I've got this lick here, what, what lick can I use over a D chord, what lick can I use over an E and uh, etc etc. Um, you don't really want to think like that. Now you've got these little tools, the theory tools of knowing you know, A major over an A chord, D minor over a D chord, A major over an E chord. Uh, take that and just you know record yourself like this. <laughs> Get a little loop pedal going. Um, or because of um, the way the electric guitar is tuned, we've got some open strings. So like you saw me doing earlier, I can hit an A, D string, A string. Second string, eighth fret. And you've got that little uh, sound happening. And then go keep the first finger on the fifth fret, third finger on the seventh fret, second string. Uh, then sixth fret on the second string. And then bar the top two strings on the fifth. And bar the top three strings, seventh fret. And then top three strings, fifth fret. Sliding forward two frets for each. It's me saying I'm gonna give you licks and I'm giving you loads here. But you don't have to do them double stops like that, you could pick them two, one, two, two, one, two, two, one, two, chilling. Give me some ideas. Any questions, hit me up on the uh, comment section below. If this is your first video seeing me. Like and subscribe me if you want. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Mike Bradley out.